Hi everyone, my name is Eliza and this is Eliza's Bookshelf. Today I am going to go over 30 plus books that will self-destruct if I do not read them by the end of this year. And by that I mean probably donate to the nearest little free library since they need a little bit of help. But all of these books are book of the month books and I want to finally read all of them because I want to start with a clean slate in 2024 and not have any books that I have to read on my list there. I have about 29 books that I still have to read and then I have three extra books that's not on the list because I got it outside of like you know my own app. I got it off of their YA book of the month program a long time ago and then gifted from other friends and so I'm just gonna go over it by the oldest to the most recent. Okay, first off, this book actually is the first book that I ever got from Book of the Month. I kind of set the tone for how Book of the Month was going to be for me, I guess, but I got it and I never read it. And this is in, let's see, I think it was in 2016. It was in November 2016. It is Tana French, The Trespasser. She is one of my favorite authors. She writes like Nordic Noir type of crime fiction books. This is following the Dublin Murder Squad. And it's like a squad with different characters and each book follows a different person on the squad. The first one was following this guy on the Murder Squad and I really love that one. Honestly, it's still my favorite of the series, but I do want to read this because it's following another person on the squad, Antoinette Conway. Uh, but yeah, I'm finally excited to get into this one. I'm just gonna go over it really quickly because it's a bunch of books. Um, this one is Every Man a Menace by Patrick Hoffman. And I think this is something about drug dealers and Southeast Asia and the Bay Area. So I'm excited for that because I grew up in the Bay Area. The next one is Lillian Box Fish Takes a Walk by Kathleen Rooney. Honestly, don't remember what this one is about. And as well as this one, Marlena. I think this is about like two girls who became friends. One is like really crazy, the other, the other one is not. But then years later, one of them dies and they just have to deal with that. The next book is American War. And I was really intimidated by this book because I thought it was like some war type of book. But reading about it, it is actually, it sounds kind of like dystopian fantasy-ish because it's about future... America in 2074, a second world war amid warfare, family fights to survive, so that sounds crazy. Next one is Since We Fell by Dennis Lehane. White Fur by Dardine LeBaire, I think. I think this is like a some sort of love story set in New York, but not like a rom-com. It's kind of serious. And the next book is A Million... A Million Junes by Emily Henry. So not a lot of people know that Emily Henry wrote a different book out of her like, you know, common rom-com books nowadays. But this one she wrote a long time ago and it is like a YA fantasy type of book um, dealing with two families that has a secret, some sort of secret or curse. I don't know. Next one is The Child by Fiona Barton. I actually read her other book called The Widow and I don't know if this is actually connected to each other, but basically you have like this big building that has been demolished and then you find little kid's bones there. And she, the detective is trying to find out where, what the history of this little child is. So that sounds crazy. The next one is The Windfall by Dishka Basu. And then we have The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne. I think this is the most intimidating book for me. I might leave this for last because it is like 550 pages and it is about post-war Ireland. So I honestly, I honestly don't know why I got that book, but I don't know. Then we have Circe by Madeline Miller, which I am super excited about because I don't know anyone who has read this book and has not liked it. And I am excited to get into more Greek mythology books. Then we have The Lies We Told by Camila Way. This is a thriller. We have A Woman Is No Man by, I can't read the font here, by Ataf Rum. This one sounds really good. It's basically a story of culture and honor, secrets and betrayals, love and violence. It is an intimate glimpse into a controlling and closed cultural world and a universal tale about family and the ways silence and shame can destroy those who we have sworn to protect. Sounds so good. Then we have The Four Queens by Astrid Stoll. Um, I think this was back then in the year where they were trying to introduce a lot of YA books and it never really picked off, but I got this one. Then we have Opposite of Always, again YA by Justin A. Reynolds. I might be reading this with Sam and Daphne. It sounds like a fantasy type of book, but you have like two teens who fall in love and then one of them dies and the other one goes back in time and tries to redo everything to make it so that she doesn't pass away. So. Sounds sad. This one, Narco 80, I got this because it is the true story of a most spectacular bank robbery in American history, and I live right near Norco, so I was very interested in that. This is Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I picked this up because a lot of people said it's like 
really confusing at the beginning but after you get to a certain point everything will make sense and it just sounds so mysterious and intriguing to me i was a little bit worried because i i was thinking like if i'm so lost for the majority of the book will i be intrigued and keep going but it's relatively short it's like 230 pages so i don't think it'll be that bad we have ariadne another greek mythology retelling and then we have this duology right here that is a finished duology so i'm excited to get into that a river enchanted as well as a fire endless and their covers are so pretty together let's see and then we have this which was the book of the year in 2022 tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow it's a, it's like i don't know if it's really a love story but it has it has to do with two on and off people and um they're like in a video game setting world let's see creative partners in the world of video game design so it sounds really good it reminds me of ready player one but i know it's not gonna be like that at all then we have bronze drum by fong yuen Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. I heard this one has a good twist at the end. We have Spells for Forgetting by Adrienne Young. This is a kind of like a mixed genre type. I think it's fantasy and mystery in one. This one is The Last Party. I don't know if it is a specifically locked room murder mystery, but you have this house party and the host is the one who dies. So yes, maybe that's a little twist. We have Hellbent by Leigh Bardugo. This one I am really excited for because I just read a recap of Ninth House and so I don't think that I have to reread Ninth House to start this one because I think it's it's it was a pretty good recap. And so this one's going to start off with Alex trying to search for this guy who was pretty much missing the whole time in the first book. I'm excited. Um, we have Georgie All Along which is a romance book and I think this is a little spicy as well. You, you really can't tell from these covers if it's going to be or not but I think I'm gonna pick this one soon next since it is February. Last one is The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz and this one everyone's like a writer I guess and they're going to this island. It's always some sort of island that looks super suspicious and it's a writing retreat and one of the writers vanishes during the snowstorm. Alice realizes that something very sinister is afoot. So yes, I think I might pick up these two first, but I have a long ways to go to finish my book of the month goal. Uh, so yeah, those were the 29 that's like on my app that I really need to cross off. And then I have three extra book of the month books over here. These two I got um, as a gift from Book of the Month a long time ago when they were just starting out their YA subscription box. So I got House of Salt and Sorrow. Ho House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin Craig. I want to read this one because Sam says she loves it and I think the second book is coming out. And this one is about a Korean guy who's trying to figure out what he wants in life. His parents are always pushing him to date a certain type of girl, you know, Korean culture and stuff like that, but he is actually falling in love with um a girl at school who's white so there's that and then the last one is gods of jade and shadow this one i got from my coworker. she said she loved it so much so i trust her I, I trust her taste in books we basically talk about books every wednesday when we work with each other and we are interested in a lot of the same books so i'm excited to get in this one and she gave me a little cat bookmark so cute okay so those are the 32 book of the month books that i want to read this one I will not actually, you know, donate if I do not read this year because it was a gift, but everything else I do want to read finally so I can um, say that I read all my book of the month books. Anyways, so I will watch this book at the, at the end of the year and see if I actually read everything, but wish me luck. It is a lot of books. I already read three book of the month books this year already, and so I'm not counting that in this, but I did read Lunar Love, I read The Family Game, and then I read What Lies in the Woods, which were pretty good. So yes. All right. Well, thank you so much, guys, for joining me again. I will see you next time. Bye.